welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, listening to our story. Uh, Bravado is a gold exploration company located in Nevada. Uh, we have a number of projects. The one you're looking at right here is our primary, um, most advanced asset, past producing mine. Going to be giving forward-looking statements, so let's make everybody aware of that, of course. It's expiration. So one of the reasons we've picked uh, Nevada as a place that we're going to be uh, doing our exploration is because it's a great place to do exploration. It's a good place to develop a mine. It's a, develop, or a good place to actually mine. It's also a place that we have a great deal of experience. So we have, uh, and, and for those of you that don't follow the Nevada exploration uh, stories, there are a number of huge discoveries that are being made and continue to be made in Nevada. So even though we've produced gold for many, many years, we continue to find new discoveries. So Bravada has, uh, and a lot of those new discoveries are actually under ground that is not contain uh, gold at surface. So there are a number of techniques. I'll, I'll touch on a couple of things that we've been doing to uh, make discoveries in places where Gold is not a, at surface. So, you know, our, as an explorer, we look at the, oops, we look at the value. Uh, if you look at a discovery, you know, the early exploration stage, as you try to develop it, there's usually a drop off and then an uprise if, uh, they are, if the junior is, is uh, actually successful. Our uh, really you know, really what we try to do is, is look, capture this uptick in exploration and then we look at partners to advance projects beyond that. So we're a small company, trading less than $10 million right now at uh, six cents. We have projects in Nevada. This is the outline here. Are you familiar with the number of the number of the, the uh, districts here, the uh, Carlin trend, Battle Mountain trend, and uh, the Walker Lane trend. Walker Lane is located in the northern portion of the Walker Lane, and uh, we just came out with a resource um, update and a PEA uh, for a phase one part of our mining operation, and pretty, uh, pretty good profitability, 38%. Fairly small amount of production, uh, about 50,000 ounces a year, which is, uh, is small by Nevada standards. Produces gold at $1,000 an ounce, all in sustaining costs less than $1,200 an ounce. So very attractive. We have, uh, this is what the, the property looks like. We have one issue with the project is there's a major power line that goes from the Lake Bonneville hydropower plant directly to Los Angeles and does not stop anywhere. The thought of moving that is uh, something in the order of you know tens of millions of dollars. So we have an area very close to the deposits. It's located right here. There's room for 32 million uh, tons of material. If you take the 32 million tons out of our existing resource, you have about four years of mine life. If you look at the, the uh, price for gold and for silver that we used and developed uh, the model open pits, you see the blue line. You see that's essentially the same area. So there's about two more years of production that is justified from what we already have, and where could we put that? Well, there's a spot right there that probably works. We're looking into doing the engineering to see if we can redesign the well, we wouldn't have to do very much redesigning of the resource, but moving that there. There's probably more room than the two years of production that we've already outlined, so where's the expiration potential? The little dots that we see out here, these are samples of uh, soil. Uh, there is mineralization that sticks out of the ground. Uh, it's broken up by faults. There's a fault block there, there's a fault block there. This is a continuation with no drilling, but obviously with the soil numbers, we, uh, we have mineralization sticking out of the ground. So there are places to continue. I've outlined here in yellow. This is an obvious place to do the exploration, even though there aren't a huge amount of ounces. 
that we expect to find here, you'd be rolling them down the hill to the heap leach pad, and these would be very, very low cost ounces. There's some mineralization that we've intersected along the ridge here. Uh, we haven't pursued very much, but uh, it would be very easy to extend the, the pit in this direction. When you see these little blocks of uh, lower grade material, then that means that we just haven't done enough drilling. Some of the resource drilling we've done right on the edge has some pretty good grade that connects up this thick zone of uh, mineralization with the pit, with the area to the east here dashed. You can also see there's some shallow mineralization. If I showed you all the drilling, there's very little drilling that has expanded these and is still open in this direction. So a lot of opportunity to uh, continue this. We have nine other projects. Many of them have gold at uh, potentially economic concentrations in the drill holes. So there are a number of types of gold deposits in Nevada. We focus on two types. One is the Carlin type. Nevada's famous for it. These make big mines, uh, long life mines. Everybody wants one of these. Most of the big companies, this is their primary focus in Nevada. Uh, worldwide, though, there is another type of deposit that, is, uh, that includes some of the richest deposits in the world, and these are the what we'd call low sulfidation vein systems. If you're not familiar with this deposit here, it's in uh, it's Hishikari in Japan. It formed about a million years ago, and uh, there's about I don't know, more than 13,000 or 13 million ounces of gold in this deposit. It averages 45 grams per ton. These can be extremely rich. I worked a little bit on the El Peñon deposit in Chile, very similar. They produced gold originally at $25 an ounce. So we now know that things like Yellowstone, if you've been there, these hot spring systems, that's what these things look like near surface. They are barren at surface, and that's an important note. This is Larry Buchanan's model of that. You see the center at the surface. And uh, you've probably seen this at other, uh, other presentations as well. So basically what you have is, is essentially barren rock at the surface and bonanza grades at depth. Our Highland project is a project that shows many of these features. Uh, on the eastern side of the property, it's not been very deeply eroded, so you have extensive areas of center formation. And on the western side, there's a lot more erosion. These things you know, kind of go up and down with time, and so you can get little burps that are pretty impressive, but don't turn into ore bodies. But what they can do is tell you that as you go a little bit deeper, there's still a, an attractive target. So we have some drilling on the west side uh, under this circumstance. And uh, you know, one question is, what do you do with the shallow mineralization? Are there any tools? Well, there in fact are. Uh, this, I think, takes a moment here, but this is some work that was done on New Zealand, and uh, they have modern active systems, so they measured the temperature of the water from where the geysers were coming up, and they noticed that there was a succession of different microbes that live in this hot environment. These are called thermophiles. Uh, they then went to look at some of these, uh, d uh, a parallel area of mineralization, that had these features preserved as fossils. Turns out those thermophiles have not developed over the last 16 million years. You see essentially the same ones. I'm showing examples that I've pulled off of Nevada, Wind Mountain, most of these are Highland. At Highland, we're actually able to find a fossil uh, geyser. So we can use other tools like geophysics and this is some uh, CSAMT. CSAMT does a good job in outlining faults. If you follow the structure that we can trace from section to section on the CSAMT, it turns out it's this uh, structure right here. We do have some drilling. We drilled this hole, got halfway down this one, lost it, brought in a partner, drilled this hole, this hole, and this hole. There's some very good uh, indications that we're near an upwelling zone. There's center exposed over here, large areas of center. Uh, there's a flow dome here. This is a hot magmatic body that came to the surface, evolved lots of gases, and we see some of those siliceous oozes flowing over the side of the, uh, the top of the hill here. So very active environment. We can get gold values on surface of half gram to a gram pretty commonly. The highest sample we've collected off of this kit was 14 grams. 
off on this east end, there's another area farther to the west, or sorry, to the north, that we get uh, 11 grams on. So anyway, very attractive uh, target. So you can see we've got a number of projects in Nevada. Uh, you see the approach that we're taking. And uh, we're part of the managed group of company that produces all the backroom stuff for us. And we'd like to see a chart like this. This is one of the managed companies years ago that discovered the Penasquito deposit, which is the largest mine in, in, uh, in Mexico.